Welcome to Self Discovery Media Network, formerly known as Self Discovery Radio. Each week we bring you illuminating shows from those making a difference in the lives of others. They've taken their own journey, they're here to share their skills, their wisdom to help you on yours. You can see more about us at selfdiscoverymedia.com and please listen to our wonderful collection of shows. Our next show is. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Michael Ploggs, a fellow podcaster. But he's doing it because he wants to build a community, a community that really counts. He feels that we... Well, we need to be happier when we come together as a community supporting one another. And that without it, we are rather separate and lonely and flapping in the wind. So we're going to find out more about his mass message of love and the trust and the respect that we need to build with each other that's more important than ever. And the messages that he wants to see go around the world. So let's explore with Michael. Let's explore Michael. And what led him to see this is something that we really do need. I 100% agree. Um, when we got so separate, this is when we got so disconnected from ourselves and that we need to be a part of a community, a part of a whole where we bring our ingredient to the table and not just try and live on one dish. So welcome to the show, Michael. Oh, I like the way you put that one dish in, and thank you for having me. Um, because it, it seems that People are trying to feed us exactly one dish. Mm. Uh, the fast food uh, dish at that. Yeah, yeah, fast food <laughs> dish at that. Yes. Either the politicians have say, "Oh, you got to eat this," mm. or the uh, industries are saying that we have to eat this, regardless of if it's truly healthy for us or not. Right? Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Um, there, there was a point. Um, they, I actually believe that industry and government was put in position to actually, for the, for the better good, right? And <laughs> That was the intent. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was <laughs> the intent. And I think I found out, um, it was almost 20 years ago that when um, friends of mine were being sent to, to Iraq for the second time, um, that under the guise that we need to get control of Iraq away from terrorism and things like that, that I realized it's like, well, wait a second, <laughs> mm -hmm. this isn't, this isn't quite what, what, what we would have in mind for, for ourselves and that our government is, isn't exactly being forthcoming. Right. So. Yes. Forthcoming um, and government doesn't necessarily work hand in hand. Mm. You know, I mean, one thing about having your president that you have right now, he tweets everything. So at least you know what's going on. Well, <laughs> Where and, everything's and, been behind closed doors up to then. Yeah. It, of course, uh, of course, because we're here in Canada and we have, we have our own. Uh, right. Yes. We have our own issues here. Yes. <laughs> it, yeah. I do. I try to only refer to um, Donald Trump as maybe the clown or something like that. I tried to, tried to minimalize him as yes. much as possible. Well, I actually did call him Voldemort until somebody said that was an insult to Voldemort. <laughs> yeah. I kind of see their point. <laughs> yes, I, okay, yeah, you've got, you've got it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what we do try to, try to focus on is, um, is the positive stories. Mm. There's something, things happen. Tragedies happen. Um, people do things to try to scare us. Yes, but let's try to focus on what happened after that. What are the stories of how we overcame? As human beings, we gathered together, formed a community to 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 bring a, to to bring us back together again to recover from what whatever whatever the act was sometimes it sometimes it's nature you know the oh, storm yeah. happens oh yes um, uh, mother nature's happens. been you know rather angry yeah. at us of late you know and uh, yeah. she's saying i don't like the way you're treating me um so she's yeah. rebelling but you know i agree I, you know i think uh, people think that we're here to suffer no we're here to learn and sometimes we do suffer 
you know, um, something that happens to us, but it's in discovery of how strong and courageous and resilient and talented we really are. And if we don't feed the why me or the negative of what happened and we look at, well, what is within me to be able to go through this and who am I to become because of it? Yeah. I think that is where we truly see the enrichment of self. That's absolutely true. And I've learned that lesson um, through several interviews that mm. I've done with NLP coaches, positivity coaches, um, and just people who have been through stuff. Yes. And, it's wonderful therapy, isn't it? Okay. It's like, yeah, I, I gotten a little bit of a tip with, with somebody and it's like, but if we put ourselves into as, as one of, one of my, um, one of my friends put it, if we keep ourselves in a state of gratitude, yeah, that, that little tiff isn't really a tiff. It's what do I learn from that? Mm. It's just a different point of view, which we're yeah. all entitled to have. It's when we become, no, oh, my view is more right than yours. Again, going back to the dish, a dish is not made of one ingredient. It needs many yeah. ingredients for us to really have a good fruitful pie here. You know, it's not just the crust. It wouldn't be a pie. <laughs> it would just right. be pastry. You know, and we need those different perspectives because through that, we get the whole picture. Yeah. So, I'm sure I don't know how many of your listeners out there you you went to you went with the Voldemort thing. So I'm assuming that a few of your listeners are actually uh, movie buffs, and oh, yes. they have seen the Matrix. And the, in the Matrix, they're eating this stuff. And I, no one ever actually ever just defined the stuff other than to say, "Well, maybe it tastes like chicken," is what they they mm. said in the movie. But they say that it has everybody has to eat this stuff because it has everything that, that you need for for your nutrients. Yeah, it was a single stuff. Right. Nobody, no other ingredients other than this stuff. Yeah, and that's the same as saying that I have to be right all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's not either. You want to live life, build relationships, or do you want to be right all the time? Yes, like you can't real necessarily have both no and god how boring it would be to have the same thing all the time you know i mean there's <laughs> so much flavor in life and there's so many flavorful people you know that you meet somebody that is totally different to what you would normally meet in your normal circle and they become a ray of sunshine now, would you want to be with them day in and day out? Maybe not. Maybe you couldn't keep up with them. You know, maybe it's not your lifestyle. But they've come in like a dash of ice cream. And, you know, they're, they're the treat. And we learn yeah. so much from them. You know, we learn so much from them because it sparks something inside of us sometimes that we didn't know was missing. Yeah. Well, I, I, when people think about this, we, we keep going back to the food reference. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what would, what would what would a let's say a holiday meal look like if we didn't have the meat mm -hmm. the vegetable mm -hmm. some starch the gravy was missing yeah you know and then and the, the dessert, dessert afterwards <laughs> yes. with, uh, with with either some sort of icing or with topping on it well yeah. yeah it just wouldn't be the same would it no. and that's no. how life is supposed to be it's supposed to have Yes, some th some things are bitter, but there's usually a sweet if you if yeah. if you ride through the bitter, right? You know, like your coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also the the feast. A feast is not a feast when you're eating it on your own. When you're eating it with other people and everybody's enjoying it, you know. I mean, breaking yes. bread around the table. I love dining out with people. Everybody's eating what they enjoy to eat. Everybody's getting the enjoyment from the food and it, it, it ignites the conversation and everybody's feeling good. And I think it's a, a wonderful thing when we start looking at life and feasting on it. Yes, it's a food metaphor today, but we forget to feast on life, don't we? We forget to get out there and just enjoy the moment or the sunshine, the way it hits the water or the ripple of the, the wind in the trees. You know, we've become so down in our texting or down in our mood that we've actually yes. forgotten simplicity of joy, of the little things, of laughter, of exuberance. I mean, 
How often do you hear that word? How many people are exuberant in life? Yeah. It, it's that texting I'm going to show yes. you here. Oh, yes. This thing, it, it seems to be disconnecting us yes. rather than bringing yes. us closer, even though at every second people are looking at it. Yeah, I know. And that's the whole point is um, there was a quote by, I'm going to loosely, loosely uh, paraphrase Albert Einstein on this one, that he said a, um, a society that only focuses on screens will probably turn into a society of idiots. Yeah, and we'd be totally disconnected. You're, you're a TV buff, that, are you? I think that he had a point. Oh yes, yes. Do, do you remember the series Outer Limits? Uh, yeah, it, movie. Yes, uh, one that there was a yes. TV series yes. Outer Limits that was kind of a um, a continuance of the Twilight Zone series from the 50s yes. and there was a series there there was an episode there where there was everybody had a chip in their head that was directed to the computer and anything they needed to know you know like siri or google you know yes. and the computer would tell them anything so they didn't need to have to do anything of their own at all and there was this guy that the chip didn't work in him so they considered him the idiot well because nobody maintained the computer it broke down Everybody all of a sudden doesn't have information. Who's the idiot now? He's the one teaching them, right? So we have got so much of Siri, this, Google, that, that we've forgotten how to investigate things for ourselves or discover things for ourselves or learn from ourselves, for ourselves. People say they're waiting for the Android to take over the world. It, it has. I have an Android phone. It's taken over the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And we've got to look at it as a wonderful tool, but we've not got to get lost in it and lose ourselves along the way. Well, that's, that's the whole thing is I think that we have begun to, to, to lose, lose humanity. Yes. To, to this. And <sighs> instead of taking, taking steps when we were younger, it's like, um, there were ads out there, don't litter and things like yeah. that because it, it would hurt the planet. We didn't, we didn't litter. Right. And, and we were, we found ways to, to dispose of things or reuse them in yeah. creative ways. Yeah. And now it's, it's, it's we're becoming overrun, overrun with the, with the rubbish. Right. Yes. Yes, I have a show on last week done by another one of my hosts, and it's Ocean Create, uh, Crusaders out of Australia. And it's mm -hmm. actually teaching kids to go and remove plastic and debris from the ocean. And I thought, this is wonderful, because these kids are seeing firsthand what is happening. We know in their generation, we're not going to see the waste in the ocean, because they see for themselves exactly what's going on. But when did we get so wasteful and so flippant with our waste, you know, and when are we going to take responsibility for the lives that we're putting at risk? And without sea life, bird life, and all other life that's suffering from this, it affects our whole ecology. And there's a spiral and domino effect that's going to affect every single one of us. Why are we so blind to this? Yeah. Well, one of the the um, uh, greenhouse gases, um, I. My show used to be positioned just before uh, an ecology show, mm -hmm. it, and he was very much so into. Um, we have to pay attention to to this as science, yeah. So we know what's going on, and we had a discussion of, about this. How we're not paying attention to what was going on when we when we used to package everything in glass. The mm -hmm. glass was reused right. in several different ways. Even if it wasn't returned to the store, it was still reused yeah. somehow or another. And with all the the lightweight plastic and everything, mm -hmm. oh, we can just toss it aside. And now look at the oceans. It has kind yeah. of... And styrofoam and all of that stuff that doesn't stuff. break down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, on a personal level, I, I like seafood. Mm -hmm. and, Me too. Um, in in living li, living in, by by the Pacific Ocean, of course, mm -hmm. seafood can be plentiful. I can't really eat most of it now. No, because the the fish is ingested toxins. Yes, 
that actually surfaces through my skin when I eat the seafood. Whales are being beached, you know, filled with plastic and turtles are being wrapped around nets. And it's just, Mm -hmm. never in my lifetime did I think I would see this. And, you know, this is, I think, going back to your community theory, we've become so, oh, it doesn't matter, somebody else's problem somebody else's problem now when you're in a community i always say let's go back to the village mentality everybody in that village has a role and that role is important for the well-being of the village including the village in it right you know everybody has a, a, um, a role to play and you never would have thought of rubbishing garbaging your village it just wouldn't have been because everybody would have been affected so why can we not look at the planet as a global village and as we should as we should and i don't know where it went wrong but it's got to stop yeah yeah that's exactly it well here's here's the thing to to that back to community everybody has a role and responsibility You see something, that need, and this is how I was brought up. I wasn't brought up with, oh, job description, this, job description, that. I was brought up, you see something needs to be done, do it. Yeah. And if we all would, would just say, oh, well, that's not right. Let's fix that. Yeah. And instead, I, I think that we're, as, as we're becoming more passive, we're waiting for some industry to come rescue us. Right. Yeah. And we're not meant to be rescued. Yeah. We're no. meant to, to thrive. <laughs> and we're also meant to be accountable. Right. You know, we're, um, every action has a reaction. So yes. whatever action we're taking, and that's including the anger that we're seeing in the world, the, the hatred, the bombings, the shootings. It's like, yeah. my God, for goodness sake, if you are so miserable with your life, seek help. Right. Take some right. ownership over it. Don't take out an AKK and start shooting everybody because somebody did you wrong and now you're going to go and get everyone. Yeah. That is a coward's way out. And also part of your life's challenge is to be able to get through diversity and come out the other side stronger, not take yeah. people out because they pissed you off. Right. Exactly. And there's two, there's a, there's a hashtag that, uh, that, that we use here at Depictions Media and is hashtag love and trust. Mm-hmm. And if you fill your heart with love and trust, then it's like you can find the strength to get through that adversity without picking up a gun and shooting the whole right. damn place up. You can you, you find the gratitude inside of yes. yourself. Oh boy, yeah. To, to be able to embrace the adversity and move forward. But you, you were talking about the people that you've interviewed. You know, mine are predominantly people that have embraced their redirect in life. You know, mm-hmm. something has happened. Maybe it's just, you know, a, a redirection, realizing they don't want to be where they are anymore. You know, maybe it's the rug pulled from underneath them. Some of them, it's the old cosmic two by four. And some of them have had to go through some things that are just unthinkable, unthinkable, never mind unspeakable. Yet they've managed to go through that. And that has become their calling, their purpose to help other people through it, to bring about awareness and the strength of who they are today because they've gone through it. And, they, and every single one of them said, although I wish that I hadn't gone through this, at the same time, I wouldn't be the person I am today and I like who I am today. So we have to be willing to go through things, don't we? Because to, that's our self-discovery of who we are. Okay. One, of the, one of the funnier interviews I did around that sort of thing was... Um, it's somebody that I've known, known for a long time who said, oh, we got it. We got to get this done. We got to get, we got to figure out how, how to work with each other, how to, and how to actually sit down and talk to each other and, and, and do this interview, right? She broke her ankle in three places because she was always on a run. She broke her ankle in three places while in Hawaii. Mm. So she comes back to Vancouver and she says, I can't move. We got a wobbly here. So she broke her ankle in three places in or and we as we were discussing the 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 whole incident, 
she realized what it was is she needed to slow down and just take care of herself. And it, ter it, it kind of became a personal joke between the two of us. Do you need, need your ankle to break again before you yeah. realize that you need to do something for you? And she's like, nope, we don't need, that, need to learn that lesson again. <laughs> I've got it this time. <laughs> and so we did, we did an interview. It was a wonderful, wonderful interview. Um, she is a life coach here in, um, in Vancouver. And she, and, and she found, found a really wonderful path. And she's actually getting herself more out there and her message more out there because she's finally listening to what's going on around her. And that is one of the, one of the things that all this, this uh, technology stuff, we're being taught to, to listen to technology and not listen to what's inside of us. Right. Yes. And the more we listen to what's inside of us, the healthier we will actually be. Right. A lot of the, these things that, that, that they're saying that are is wrong with us health wise should actually start to disappear. The more we listen to ourselves and seek the, the inner wisdom um, and the inner happiness is that we're supposed to find. Right. Oh, I've got a few points there. I mean, I broke my ankle in three points too. <laughs> Falling off a rock, nothing glamorous, no skiing. I slid off a rock and snapped three bones in my ankle. And that was to get me out of high heels, I think, <laughs> because I was having back problems. And it was like, if you're not going to go into flats, I'm going to flatten you. Um, but yes, the slow down and, and uh, you know, life had to change after that. But I totally agree with that. If we're constantly in a hurry, I mean, so many people, yes, but I got to, I'm a visionary. I see something and I want to get out and I want to do it. Well, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, what I've learned now is see it, put it together in, in, in a blueprint. How does it look in that blueprint? Then let it sit, put it out to the universe, you know, right. feed it and nurture it just like you would bamboo shoots. You don't see what's growing under the ground, but keep watering it, keep nurturing it. And when the time is right, you'll start seeing the shoots come up you start seeing the interest being there or being able to be in synergy with other people in order to make something um, happen. I didn't used to have the patience for that. And I had to learn through various knockbacks, a little a couple of two by fours myself here to slow down and pay attention. And, you know, like you, I've learned so much wisdom from the people who have knowledge. And there's the difference. A lot of people have knowledge. Do mm -hmm. they have the wisdom to understand the knowledge? I'm yes. a knowingness coach. So it is allowing your soul to speak to you that will resonate with your heart in truth, that will lift your spirit into action and your mind will know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. That's where the knowingness and the wisdom comes into. You don't need to know everything in your head all the time. The wisdom is to know what you need to know, when you need to know it so you can apply it. And that yeah. takes so much pressure off us. Of, oh, should I know this? No, no, that. Just calm down. Breathe. Ask the universe. Allow it to come through you. Mm -hmm. And th then it will be, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. It, it, the, the funny thing between these <laughs> yeah. between here is it, it, it has the world's at least at least this world's most powerful computer yes yes it has the ability to take in knowledge process knowledge and then act on it yeah and but we have to sit down and listen to what's going on right and sometimes we do we use we use our mouths too much or or we or in today's world, we do too much texting yes, yes. instead of listening. And too much in our head. Not yeah. enough coming from the heart or for the soul or from right. the spirit. Each one of those has its own intellect, its own mm -hmm. connection. And if it's going back to the analogy of the food. If we just use the brain, we're only using one ingredient. You know, right. when we use the heart, soul, and the spirit into the equation, now we've really got a full dish that we can work from. It's, it, has to, it has to work out the yeah. balance in each situation is going to have a different balance yes so, and, and until uh, we find that balance we're not going to build our community back up again right 
Right. You know, we've got to realize another analogy that I, I always speak to is that it's discovering our instrument. What instrument are we? Uh, learning to play it in a way that, that we could bring it to the orchestra of life and play that music that is an invitational symphony that invites others to discover their own instrument. We're responsible for that instrument. That's our self-discovery. And yes. when we've discovered what that is, we now can bring it to that orchestra, to the collective, to the community. And each mm -hmm. instrument is so important in that symphony. It's not one instrument. It's the harmony and the synchronicity and the respect and, the, and everybody's position in that orchestra that's going to really make the crescendo of that music speak, not just right. one. That, that, is, that is so true. Um, one of my favorite com composers on that is, is um, Amadeus Wolfgang Mozart. Mm -hmm. And did he, because he, he heard it. Yes. It was in his head. And did he hear just one instrument? No. <laughs> he could hear the, the, all mm. of, of the brass go at one yeah. time. And maybe it would start with just one small little thing and then build out. But it's like, it, we all can do that. And your, that's the, your storytellers that's the are doing that. Your movie producers are doing They see the scene. They see everything. Architects do mm -hmm. that. They don't just look at the foundation and go, okay, now I've got to put this brick here and that there. They see the building. And then yeah. go about how to blueprint it, right? Right. You know, we, we mustn't lose our vision, our vision, our dreams of what the bigger picture is. Because when we see that, now we can see what our part is in it, what we're not capable of doing. I'm no good at the plumbing. I'm no good at this. I'm no good at that. Bring those other people in and work together. Yeah. Well, he, here's the thing with that, right? Work together. Yeah. <laughs> All life is designed to work together. Yes. Yes. And the trees have their part. Yes. Oh. And they know what their part is. They see what their vision is supposed to be. They see the broad vision. They they've been on been on our planet way longer than the rest of us, right? right. And outlive us. Yes, unless, unless yeah, we chop them down. Yeah. Us. Yes. And it will outlive us. But um, the, the, right on down to, to, to whatever the microscopic being is, we all have our vision and we all have our role to play. Um, one, of the, one of the things is, is even with it, within ourselves as a, as a human being, just a single human being, we have thousands of life forms inside of us mm -hmm. helping keep us going as a colony of life. Mm -hmm. And that is how our planet is supposed to work. We're supposed to be one colony of life working together to create beauty. Well, I mean, it's like, you know, Avatar, and it's like the Matrix, and it's like mm -hmm. a numerous other type of movies. Everything is connected by this energy. When you look at the roots mm -hmm. of the trees, and Judy Dench did a wonderful series on trees, which if you have yes. the ability to get to is wonderful. And they show the matrix of the trees, how they feed, how they nurture, how they protect each other, even when they go down, how new birth comes from them. Uh, it mm -hmm. is, there is as strong a forest as they are because of the togetherness. And when you look at movies like the avatar or like the matrix showing that energy connection scientists are now realizing people that choose to quote live in spirituality are actually living in a quantum energy that is a higher frequency and we call it the love frequency because when you're on that frequency you don't want to do harm to anyone else you want to live yeah. in a state of caring and kindness and you realize the energy of that and how important it is and that how it also begets other positive energies. So why are we not raising up our frequency and, you know, joining this wonderful wavelength of more harmony? Because, my God, do we need it in the world right now? Oh, yes, we do. Um, we, not a, we don't need to keep keep focusing on 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 the on the things that happened. Well, okay, there is one last one last tragedy that I will focus on, and that is Notre Dame. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now look at what the 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 fire department they work together as a yeah. team to yes. save the building. Now there's another team that can come in place that can restore the building, mm -hmm. and. 
the, the community gathered to help put energy into the firemen while they were rescuing the building. Right. The prayers, yes, the, the round the world, yes. Right, right. Yeah. Look, at, look at what happened. They were, what's it, uh, thir 20, 30 minutes away from total collapse right. of the building, and there was something happened, and it all settled, and, they, and the building is safe. And we didn't lose the beautiful windows that are its trademark, yeah. right? You know, um, or a life. Or life, exactly, no. exactly. Um, you know, 20 odd years ago, we had a house fire. And, and I'm standing there, you know, watching my house go up in flames. And I remember saying, please don't take our pictures. Don't take the photos, the albums. When I went back into the house afterwards, windows were black, roofs had come in. But on the wall were pictures of the family and the glass wasn't even broken. And the firemen were astonished. All our photo albums, the, the room underneath it had completely burnt. The roof had fallen in. All the photo albums were okay. That power of that positive energy, that surge of energy at that time formed that protection. Is it yes. for us to ask how? No. Get out of having to understand how. Just understand, you know, is what Yoda says, you know, um, I can't remember the exact analogy, but uh, don't think, just do or something. Or yes, is that yeah. Nike? You know, something along that way. Yes, it was and something like that. Yeah, and it's, it's that we've got to stop questioning things and going, well, I don't know if it works. It's worked for thousands of years. Why did we get so dumb? You know, it's, we have so much ability to have so much knowledge, yet we seem to have gone stupid. <laughs> and, and there is a big difference between dumb and stupid, uh, at least the way I see it, that stupid means to, that we refuse to keep learning. Right, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's the whole point, that we've hit a refusal point of, of learning. Oh, or distrust of the knowledge. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Whereas, you know, the elders always trusted the gut, you know, the divine knowledge, the heart, and that spirit. Where they tapped into the universal Earth's energy to understand the knowledge, the knowingness, we today have got so cynical that we are distrusting the knowledge that is actually given to us. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah, but, but what? Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. I don't understand the but what's, you know, why do you have to query everything? Can't you feel it? Does it resonate with you? Why do you have to be so negative over everything? Because this is what's one of the problems that we're having right now. And mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but our children at the present moment are the creative ones. The way they're able to articulate and see things in a matter of a fact way, but speak from the heart and the soul and speak in such a way that that is resonates so much more maturely than we're seeing in, in many adults. I think they're here to save us. And yeah, but what do we say, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, they, they're not, they, they're not, they're not following our, our competitiveness the, yeah, but they're not following this value that we have. Where did that get us? Yeah, <laughs> I I love the, love the the fact um, that the millennial generation is co working, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. finding cooperation among themselves. Yes, yes. And I think that that is this is an amazing thing to have, and that. We should nurture that instead of trying to force them. No, you have to compete. You have to be on top. We have to grow. And at what point do do we stop growing our economy? At what point do yes. we do do we say, "Hey, we ha we have yeah. enough, <laughs> yeah. enough." There's a wonderful um, documentary out there called Normal is Over, done by Reni and Cheval Rochup. It's a German name, I can't pronounce it. Um, I have her here under my Eco Solutions. And uh, it, she took five years to do this movie and went around the world interviewing scientists and, and ecologists and people and to look what really is the root of the problem. And um, really, when you come down to it, it is consumerism. 
we mm -hmm. were taught that more is better and you'll never be happy unless you have more and so we've been hungry for more and more and more and everything that we buy doesn't last so we can go out and buy more and what we're doing is we're raping and pillaging earth's resources because it can't keep up with the demand because it's not meant to because right. we're not, not meant to have such a demand we've become incredibly wasteful and disrespectful of something instead of repairing it toss it away get another one and this consumerism is has become a replacement for heart and we're just we're hungry mm -hmm. we are hungry it doesn't matter how much you go out and buy it's not going to satisfy the hunger that lies within you and we've got to stop consuming at this rate because it's just we are the the fault of the people who are the greed that's generating all of this right mm -hmm. um but the greedy ones are now paying the price have you seen that uh, ad with uh, freedom right now um, you've got the guys laughing. Oh, yes, you know, they'll pay more for a cell phone. They'll pay more for this because where else are they going to go? Well, now the competition right. is, is no, we're going to charge less and give them more because we want people to understand that they stop gouging, stop gouging people. And we've got to understand if we make each other abundant, that means there is more to go around. If we have such poverty with people that have so little and so many that have so much, where are you generating e-commerce? You're not, right? It right. doesn't make sense. Well, there, there, there comes a point where it's like we, we have, we've gone from, from when we were children from, Hey, a lot of money was was a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and now yes. a lot of million is is it starts at a billion. Yes. Like, yeah. and, and can I get by and, on that? Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when do you discover that enough? Mm -hmm. You have enough money just just to be. Yeah. And that's we we keep. And we keep looking at, oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. And it's like, and I need the money to do this, this, and this. And it's like, well, you don't need a lot of money to be. Right. Yes. And yes, the cost of living has, has gone up. Um, I don't know where you are in Canada, but I'm in Victoria, BC, which is an incredibly expensive place to live in. Yeah. We're, and, we're a channel apart from each other. Right. So I don't know what your <laughs> pricings are over there, but it is... It's just ridiculous because obviously salaries aren't going up and rents and cost of living is going up. And again, that still comes down to the greed. You know, if every single one of these industries and organizations, if every one of the government said, you know what, a little less tax, let's not put those prices up on something. Let's give people a break. Look at the gas prices that we're having here right now. That is absolutely ridiculous. It, what does it mean? My gas price right now is a is a dollar seventy a liter. I, 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 hello, I, that means people can't go anywhere. They can't shop. Right. You know, they they can't go and do events or things that they want to do because the gas prices are too high. They can't afford it. Right. So, how are you generating economy? How right. are you generating the community and supporting everyone? You can't afford to do so. <laughs> Right. If 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 I can't if I can't afford to get to get yeah. to some, how are you right? going to purchase? Yeah. How are you going yeah. to keep that community going? Yeah. 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 Um, Time to rethink. One, one of one of our our, our outlets um, is F, FM radio. Well, to to an extent, I can do a lot from where I'm sitting right now. Right. But that's another whole community of people to be able to sit in that building mm -hmm. and, and broadcast. And after you're done, it's like it, to hear the, the collaboration of, yeah. because they're listening to, right. to, to, to you do an interview and they're like, Oh my God, listen to the questions that you did. It's like, how do I, how do I make that happen for my show? Right. So that I can ask those kind of questions and, and talking to people about how to dig in deep inside of their own message mm. so that they can help somebody else's message come out. Yes. Can, you can pull it out of them. Yeah. It, I mean, but, but gas prices and, um, 
and bus fare and things like that is like they they get get they very get pricey. Yeah. Yes. Why are you parking in downtown Vancouver? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. Where do you, where do you, <laughs> you park know. in that costume? I know, 20, I know. I mean, $20, $30 to, to be there and do a show, right? Yeah, I, I mean, it was, it was one of the reasons I left the Lower Mainland, you know, is because of, because I've only been here around 15 months in Victoria, but it mm-hmm. was because everything was becoming so dense. And, you know, with the density of people and with the traffic and everything else, you could start feeling a staticness that, you know, wasn't that beautiful harmony that Vancouver used to have, a fluidity that it used to have. And I wasn't feeling that anymore. I love going back. I love seeing my friends and family. And I love coming back here. Uh, yeah. This is a city village here in Victoria. I can walk into town. I can do everything and anything I want to do. But I've still got this feeling of a, of a village type thing, even though it is a huge city. But I think this is, you know, one of the problems... I don't know how our young people can afford to buy today because of all the pricing. You know, their, their school fees, they're, they're in debt. But at the same time, it's a different opportunity. We're seeing so many people now being creative and going, you know, I can't afford university. I can't afford that. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be an innovator. I'm going to create a business. I'm going to create an industry. And through the wonderful tool of the computer and the internet, we're seeing so mm-hmm. many innovation of, uh, you know, coming out. I mean, I never would have thought in my 50s I would have been starting a, um, you know, a podcast network you know, interviewing people from around the world through the computer. Me? Ha, ha, ha. I never would have yeah. believed that, right? <laughs> never mind doing but, all the editing so, and everything else. Me? Yeah. <laughs> so where did, you, where did you start before? Uh, what did I do before? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I've done many things. I've been a restaurateur. I've owned um, uh, dress shops. I'm a spiritual counselor. Um, okay. And uh, uh, behind uh, invested in uh, an electric quantum electric motor technology way before its time and wow. uh, yeah i've you know i've done a lot of things uh, always around people though you know i'm a people yeah. person so um but i always say it doesn't matter where you've been because you always take the ingredients of where you've been into what you're doing now and you know i don't know about you but i the the podcasting the insights into other people's lives their strength and their courage and who they are and what they've become today mm-hmm. is so illuminating and so utterly inspiring and inviting because we look at gosh you went through that and this is who you are today i need to dig deeper in myself yeah well okay so getting back to of course, radio and everything, right? Mm-hmm. That we both have had this have this this thing, this podcast that can be broadcast around the world, right. not only through the internet but also on FM radio. Yes, and I had to learn to refine those tools because I started as a, um, I have a have a, a, a degree in chemical engineering <laughs> and. Um, and a with with a sprinkling of Judeo Christian studies in there, where part of that means broadcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but oh, it was but, a no-brainer that you go and do this. Of course, all the yeah, parts it's no-brainer. Here. <laughs> but 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 something, and this is and this is again back to listening is something drew me. Yeah, and like and. Yes, I had I had to had to get out there about the whole thing um, with the with the Iraq War and, and the president that that just didn't seem to care about human life, um, and I had to get that message out there. Okay, that was one thing. But then I discovered I had a whole message that revolved around my hashtag love and trust, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. I was like, okay, I, I got to keep going at this. And then I sat there and, I, and was like, okay, even if I can't get to the station, it's like I realized through the technology that I have in, in front of me on my computer um, that I can still broadcast yes. to people and I need to keep doing that. Right. So that's how we just – I. I was partnered with a few people and some of the people, they left and others stayed. Yeah. And 
and this is how depictions media came about right you know yes it's a journey and that's, it has to get out there yes but so. that's the point we've got to get that message out there because you know the cnn effect is taking a pimple and making it into a volcanic eruption and all right. the other media the doom and the gloom and the this and the that and if you watch that it's just you know how, why am i carrying on you know what's the purpose of it when there's so much misery in the world how you know a should i be happy because i feel guilty while other people are miserable and it's just miserable a state of being of humanity today no no mm -hmm. no 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 be happy be joyful be purposeful be abundant and share 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 because that's how right. we share that energy out and you know, through podcasting, it's a wonderful way of sharing those messages that are inspiration on illuminating to other people and an invitation for them to go, you know, it's okay for me to be happy. It's okay for me to, yeah. to place some value on myself. It's okay for me to seek joy. You know, I don't have to be miserable in sympathy with other people. I could be that beacon of joy that brings people to back to joy. Right. Absolutely. And I love being that, that, mm. that beacon. Um, we do, do quite a, quite a, a variety of shows that, that wrap around that. Mm -hmm. um, um, even I started, started a, a new one just, just on Easter um, doing, uh, doing Sunday sermons. That's mm. the first one on Easter. And it isn't about, Oh, the doom and gloom mm -hmm. and how we need to repent sort of thing. It right. is, hey, look at what happened with with Moses and Aaron that Moses had a stutter and Aaron helped support his brother by by talking to people. He get the message from Moses get the message from God and and Aaron would help Moses tell that message to the people. And then the people would come together and Mm -hmm. and would work together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they traveled together and then that led into to how jesus christ was trying to bring people together yes for the purpose of love he was he was, <sighs> he was fighting the romans by producing love Mm -hmm. He wasn't fighting the Romans with a sword. No. <laughs> no. And look it how afraid they were of love. Right? Yeah. Look how the powers that be are so afraid of love. Why? Because love has such an incredible high frequency. And when you're in mm -hmm. that state of love, you don't wish to harm anyone else. You wish to know them. You wish to heal. You wish to care them. That doesn't mean you condone. If things being done to other people that are wrong but it does mean that you try and invite people up to rise up to a frequency where they don't wish to do harm so love's weapon is yeah. do no harm so for people who profit off that yes it's a, it's a, a, a something they want to get rid of don't let them yes <laughs> exactly and that's the and and that's it's like I see see myself. I don't see myself as Jesus Christ. No, I see myself <laughs> as, as a proponent, as a messenger, as a messenger, a messenger to, to deliver to deliver loves to to yeah. people who who tune in to to listen to us. Right. And I'm so grateful that you tuned in one day and you, and we found each other. Yeah, this but that's like, again, it's about thing. that collaboration. You know, people say, "Why do you interview mm -hmm. other podcasters?" And I say, "Because we're all riding that wave, and it's about getting our message out. And if more people tune into you now because they've heard you today, then hallelujah! Because it's, you know." I call up um, the station here, the Orchard of, you know, Self-Discovery Media is the um, Orchard of Wisdom, ready for clicking. And then mm -hmm. every single tree I've got here bears an abundant fruit of knowledge. And you never know when you're going to need that knowledge. You could be going through life and go, something happens to you. I've got a show for that. You've just hit that wall. I've got a show for that. I want to start a business, don't know how. I've got a show for that. And that's the right. beauty of it. We've got a library of shows that's going to help you at whatever phase of life you're in. Right. And that's exciting. And for everybody who's tuned in listening to us, it's like your brain has already absorbed enough of it. Yes. It's like, oh, well, wait a second. I can go look this up and, yeah. and discover it again. And then put it into action. Right. Because we, you know, the old pick of thanks thing, you know, when, when you share something, you know, my 
my people come in and share their their why or you know the the challenge to where they got where they are today and that you know i relate to that i've been on that journey now they're sharing the how they got through it and then they're sharing <laughs> what they've become because of it and you know one of them in I have a couple of people in mind. One of them is a young singer called Keshi, and she was a burn victim. She was on America's Got Talent uh, twice on the champions and, and on the other. And, you know, when you look at Keshi, she's clearly disfigured. There's no hiding that. And I'd interviewed her before she had gone on America's Got Talent. I brought her back on, when she was on the initial one with a burn victim who was a veteran who chose comedy as his way out. You know, he had arm missing you know, he was burnt down to the skull, but, you know, laughter was going to be his savior. And that's what he does now. Keshi's was singing. And then, of course, she went back on the champions and I had her back on again. She's one of the most real, wonderful, down to earth, sweet, loving people you would ever, ever get to know. And she has every right to be bitter or miserable or have an excuse in life. She chose not to. She chose... Right to look at this gift of life and go, what can I do to live it to its best? Yeah. And that's an, that's an amazing story. Simply amazing story. So. And there's so many of them here yeah. that, you know, is just so that I'm sure you have got so many of them that have left their mark with you. Yes. It is so many that so many stories I have yet to find. Yes. Yes. I, I, I have a, I do have a, have a goal, and it, it is an out there kind of goal, I suppose. But um, to reach a billion people. Mm -hmm. But I look at one of one of the people that I never actually met uh, met this particular mentor, but she's in uh, something to look up to mm -hmm. um, with um, with Harpo um, Productions, Oprah Winfrey. Right. She, she, she has reached a billion people. Yes. Well, her life is, how, how much different is her life than my life? Mm -hmm. for Except for hers has been more in the camera over a longer period of time, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, she's <laughs> yes. had that opportunity to, to share for longer. So, of course, she has that broader audience. Yes. Well, that doesn't mean that we can't, if, you know, if people share the shows, that's how the beautiful right. spider web and the matrix goes. Don't just listen to it and keep it to yourself. If so, it had, if it touched you, share it. <laughs> yeah. So, so Sarah, how many, how many celebrities have you, have you, have you interviewed? Um, well, the, celebrities the, in their field? the, 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 oh, quite a few celebrities in their own field, actors, yeah. artists, uh, musicians, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, political people in their own realm, um, you know, no big box office people yet. Um, but yes, you know, people that um, are definitely celebrity rising or celebrities in their own world. I'm very content to yeah. be and grateful for the world that they're in. Yeah. Well, uh, from the music industry, I, I, I had the, had the opportunity to get, to get connected to um, one of the guitars from earth, wind and fire. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Um, very, very cool guy. And he came on my show because he was talking about how he was able to start playing guitar again after being diagnosed with Parkinson's. Mm, mm -hmm. um, yes. You were like Michelle I, Pascal, who works with one yeah. of the guys from Earth, Wind and Fire. And together mm -hmm. they've been doing music um, because uh, Michelle is a monk. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so he doesn't sing words. He sings beautiful harmonies and, and the earth, wind and fire guy has done the music and they have played at Carnegie hall a few times. And so they've, um, been doing wonderful things. Um, but actually somebody else that you would like would be Robert Williams, who used to be a beach boy, uh, became very mm -hmm. sick, had to leave the beach boys and then dedicated his life actually into actually understanding water and the value of water and what water holds in it, not just the nutrients, but the energy, and has created um, a purity that purifies our water, that actually changes our consciousness. Yeah, um, one of, you know, one so of my co-hosts, um, the, um, when you put, the, she, she met, the, met one of the people that, that have done the experiment about, um, the discovery experiment, not, not to repeat, the discovery experiment of how if you put the right energy into water, yes, Emoto. 
they, they how the crystals align yes. or yes. how they disalign. Yes. So, and, and that was a, that was a, a wonderful story that she told. Um, yes. About, yes, that that came about from Imoto. Um, hmm. a Japanese scientist who, who uh, yeah. did that. And then Yashiyuki, who was his assistant, um, continued on the work. And he actually came on with Robert Williams, with me, and he also came on on his own. Bless his heart, three o'clock in the morning in Japan, he came on to do the show. <laughs> and, and it's fascinating how he's gone around the world and just checked the waters out and seen the crystallization and looked at the harmony in which the people are living in and right. how it's changed the water chemistry. There's something to bear in mind. We are 70% water. So yes. if, if we are at disease, that water is um, not providing for us at all. This is why we get so much disease and illness. But if we are resonating on that higher love frequency, we are actually nutriently feeding our body into a well-beingness. Very well said. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it awesome to get to, to interview people like that who are doing such extraordinary things? Um, there's Polly Higgins from Ecoside. The very sad thing is, Polly Higgins started a law oh gosh, 20 odd years ago, um, it's ecocide like genocide. And it will actually make things that harm the planet or harm the humans on the planet and a, a law that and not the, where the companies can spend a lot of money and hide behind the lawyers, that they'll hold the, mm -hmm. the president or the CEO accountable and it will be criminal and they would go to jail. And so this law is slowly growing around the world and really gathered momentum. I had a wonderful interview of her twice. She was meant to come back again on with me in February, but she got sick with the flu. And the tragedy is that flu turned into something else. And she died on Easter Sunday, um, six weeks after she got this flu. And it is such a loss. I mean, her people will carry on. But I look at someone like that, who's dedicated her life so much to being an earth protector. And to lose somebody like that, you know, so young in her 50s with such dedication to life. And, but it's also a reminder how we take things for granted, like flu. You know, I've just got the flu. I'll just go to work. And mm -hmm. she just got the flu. And less than two months later, she was dead. And this is also a reminder, don't just, oh, I've got the flu. I'm going to just take a pile of pills. Take care of yourself. Don't let it, it go is, to another level. It is that sign. Now, there are some, th some things that um, I have a friend, um, and I'm going to do the, the American thing. May she rest in peace. Um, her name was Melena, and Melena was a wonderful person. When I first met her, um, we, did, we, we did do do an interview with her, um, many many years ago and uh she she was just fantastic i did a photo shoot with her a beautiful beautiful lady and my co-host um on one of the shows uh diane was actually one of one of her students mm -hmm. so the thing comes back comes back full circle for me to find out that she had gone back to eastern europe to um to find some other types of treatment for the cancer that she had. Mm -hmm. Well, it turned out that she had had the cancer the whole time I'd known her, mm. but it wasn't like sometimes cancer is you, you, yeah. you ignoring yeah. the fact that you, you clear the its energy out of you. It was, this was the, was the universe's way of saying we're, we're taking down. You've accomplished so much. Yes. We're taking it's down. time for you to go home. Time for you to go home. Yeah. Yes. And I saw that the, the last video coaching that she did with, um, with, with Diane Hume, my co-host, and, and the person that she, that she left behind with this energy, she passed the energy. It passed. Mm. You saw the light come yeah. up. And as she was at one point when she was doing the, doing this coaching and it was a beautiful thing and i and i was so grateful to see that yes yeah so yeah disease in one in one respect is is here to tell us it's a signal mm. to yes. tell us hey 
listen up. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you something. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it is, it's, you know, preventable. Things, it's there to, yeah. to take us down. Mm. And, and it's like, okay, start getting ready. It's time for you. I like to, I like to think of it's death not as an end, but a graduation. Right, yes. Ascension, we call it. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> That yes. you're, that you're moving on to the to to an, to the next stage, and it's it, and it's all we ha- all have that time. Yes, you know? we do, and it's um, do numerous shows on death, and it's um, I've never been afraid of death. You know, I think more people are afraid of living than death, um, and death is is just a going home, and it's like, have I done mm. what I came here to do? Have I lived my life fruitfully to the best of my ability? Have I, you know, contributed? to mankind in the way that I was meant to? Um, or have I sat back in fear? Or have I uh, let everybody else do it for me? Because you're going to come back and repeat. Um, but, you know, <laughs> for, for some people, yeah, I very much believe in soul contracts. You know, we sign a contract when we come here. I'm going to come here. And you don't necessarily say, I'm going to come here and suffer. But is I'm going to come here and have the human experience, but bring my divine light into the equation and leave my mark and we we lose some people way too young because yeah their flame has has risen so high they've left their mark it will continue on without them now and they can go home but it's heartbreaking to us to lose them yeah Uh, so uh, how do people find you how do they find the shows um, do the shows have information on them? Is it, are you on iTunes or just FM? I mean, okay. what's the process? And if they so, want to be a guest, what's the process? Yeah. So if they, if, if you subscribe solely to iTunes, um, you would need to search for Michael Clogs. Uh, kind of simple. Same as on Spotify, iHeartRadio. Simply uh, type that into the Got a wobbly game. The search for the and if you are just trying to trying to find us off the off the web, okay, uh, go go to depictions dot media. And that's dot com. No, it uh, dot media depictions dot oh, okay. media. Or okay. bit, there's a there's a bit of a bit of a story behind that, um, but it is depictions dot media and. You'll see. See, it's a blog. Um, it's a blog site, and you can find different shows there, different things that we're talking about. Sometimes it's a, it's a rebroadcast of somebody else's stuff. Then we'll put a different flavor to it. Um, that sort of thing. Um, so just click around through there, and there's a contact page on that, and that contact page sends it sends me email directly. Okay. And is there so, an about, yeah, yeah. about you and uh, so people can read all about you and uh, uh, know which one is your yeah. show? Um, for, for right now, and until we add more, sh- add, get more shows up there, um, that I'm working with a few people. One day is a mortgage broker and her goal is to house as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, where we will, in the next few months, we'll get her show up there. Uh, for right now, though, most of the shows are me, right? Or me and or me and, and, and a co-host. So right, okay, so, yeah, great, mm-hmm. wonderful. And so it's depictions dot media. Do you have any social media or um, any other way um, that people can get hold of you? On on Twitter, it's either Michael's Clogs or uh, if you if you search uh, for Depictions Media again, um, if Facebook is either Depictions Media or Michael Clogs. You start to see a theme appear here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Social media, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, it's of course uh, Michael Michael Clogs. So um, there's. We do get hooked up to other social media outlets, and this is the miracle of the software. But I can't, I can't really, because because I ha- I have to like this is a business, so yes. you have to go with where yeah. where most people are, are being actively sharing your stuff. Right. So, exactly. 
I can't speak to the other other uh, like the Instagrams and the, all that yeah. stuff. I'm sure that's there, but I really can't tell you tell yeah. you too much. Yes, too now much I'm not about. a big Instagram because it all has to be done by the phone. Um, eight hours on the computer, <laughs> and the last thing I want to do is do things on the phone. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, and you know, the, I'm glad but, that you mentioned it's a business. Um, I recently put out, um, well, I did a show a couple of years ago about the efficacy of podcasting, you know, being a host and being a guest. Because, oh, I can just mm-hmm. do a podcast or I can just come and it's just a podcast. And, you know, um, I had a couple of people who kind of disrespected that in the last week or two. Um, oh, I was busy. I didn't turn up. No, I'm sorry. This is my profession. Um, you know, yeah. you, you, if you've got a lawyer or if you've got somebody else and you don't go to their appointment, they can charge you. Um, yes. And, you know, you will turn up. So why aren't you turning up here? And you're also, um, you know, obligated to share what has been done. Uh, there are codes and conducts. And so I kind of wrote them out the other day and shared them on social media and put them on that etiquette show. And we've got to actually understand this isn't just a little podcast. This is something we take seriously. It is media going out just as it would be from a radio station. We're our own network. Mm-hmm. And what we put out, we stand by, we honor the people that we interview and people need to respect that, whether you're an interviewee, an interviewer, or whether you're a listener. And if we don't have respect for that, then we're losing the value of everything. Yeah. So, you know, it's um, when you want to be interviewed, please make sure that you provide the material that you need to provide, turn up on time and, uh, and understand you know, the expertise that's being given you and look at it as I can take this show that I've done and put it up on my own site. And it now becomes a platform for other people to hear all about you. It's a benefit to you. Uh, so use it as such. Um, and don't be so flippant. Going back to that whole consumerism, ah, and I'll just get another one. No. <laughs> so it's no, not valuing, it right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. so if people want the, to be a guest, they... Become... Yeah, show up yes. and show up well. <laughs> yes, yes. And, you know, prepared and, uh, um, and also just ready to go with how you lead, right? Don't come up with, I want it to be done this way, ready to go because we each have our own style. And the people will tune into you mm-hmm. because of your style. Uh, don't try and mimic somebody else's style discover your own and be your own and that's what people will come to you for and if your style isn't your cup of tea as I say I'm not everybody's cup of tea I'm somebody's strong cup of coffee if that's your style that's (laughs) who you'll tune into so um, that's the importance of it so keep on doing what you're doing because it's really important we keep getting the message out there and giving a platform so if people want to be a host also they can join your network Yes, they can. Jo- they can join the network. Um, there, um, there, are, there are some fees involved because Obviously. hey, yes, putting things together. <laughs> yes. um, the, 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 you're not. You, some may say, "Oh, well, I'm paying you." No, you're paying me so that I can pay others. Precisely, you know, there is costs involved to doing all of this, and and uh, you know, I don't know about you, but we, this is my profession, um, so I'm mm-hmm. giving a service. So yes, I'm charging for that service, and you, yes. it's your free will whether you accept that or not. But if you do, understand, that's what it is. So yes, uh, you know, this mm-hmm. whole thing about podcasts should be free. Uh, no, why should you be out of pocket? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm not sure sure how how you do things. We all, we also look for sponsors on a regular basis. Yes, and as a responsibility to those sponsors, um, that I should have a representative product that is worthy uh, of them placing their products in inside of it. Right. You know. It's yes. That it is quite that simple. Now. We do, pay, but that's another, another, another issue that could turn into another. We have some wobbly episode. here again. Sorry, got a wobbly here. So we can Just hold. We have another wobbly. 
Okay, hopefully we're back there. We've got another little wobbly. And that's something to remember too, folks. This is done by internet. And so we're at the mercy of bandwidth oh, and everything. Oh, no, back to the wobble. Yes, wobble. back to the wobble. <laughs> yes, very true. Uh, we're still at the wobble. Okay. Yes, yeah. And so, okay, so um, a message you'd like to leave the audience with. Live your life well and live it f full of love and and happiness yeah that's it yeah and and if so. you don't know how to do that tune in because you've got people who will show them the way that's very true <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, depictions.media and people yes. will find everything there excellent mm -hmm. well thank you for sharing with us michael and of course i have the honor of being on your show as well um this is you know, another wonderful thing to do in businesses is exchange and support one another mm. because there's a collaboration and celebration of each other, which there's enough to go around for everyone. So I look forward to being on your show too. And uh, I really am happy you're doing this because we need more of it out there. We need more of this message out there. And the more we can get out, the more we're going to shift those energies. So let's keep, um, let's keep that love and harmony growing. So thanks for being with me here today. Uh, thank you for having me. And until right. next time, folks, remember, we're here to help you with such wonderful knowledge and wisdom. You're not alone. We are with you. We're helping guide you all along the way. And, but it still is up to you to participate into your own life and invest into your own life. Let us guide you and help you get back on your own feet on your own beautiful, loving journey in life because we need your beautiful, loving energy. Until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. To hear more of these wonderful shows on selfdiscoverymedia.com, just look up our podcast genre list. You will see many shows archives there ready for listening. Don't forget to share these wonderful shows. And if you wish to be a guest or a host, or you have an organization that needs to be highlighted, contact us at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com. Bye for now.